Per voi che avete acquistato Siga, questo è il vostro momento. Avete Sonic Mage? Mettete le posizioni TV. Se siete vincenti, la spilla si accenderà e suonerà da sola. Occhio solo magico, anche orecchio. Il tuo Sonic Mage si è acceso per Epra, lo 039 2026 071. Occhio però, con i giochi preziosi. Incredibile. In 2008, a short video was uploaded to YouTube showing an amusing TV advert for what appeared to be a promotion for the Sega Mega Drive in Italy. And whilst English-speaking audiences couldn't understand it in full at the time, it seemed clear that it was advertising both the console and a Sonic the Hedgehog pin badge that you could get with the system if you bought it. And the advert would have just likely died into obscurity if it wasn't for the fact the advert contained a rather amusing animation of Sonic the Hedgehog that appeared with almost demonic glowing eyes and some incredibly out of tune music. Anche Oreggio. Il tuo Sonic Badge si è acceso? Telefona allo 039 2026 071. Se non si è acceso, invia ugualmente la cartolina del concorso. Con i giochi preziosi, incredibile. At the time, many fans laughed at this animation and called it the Death Ray Eyes Sonic. But everybody didn't realize until many years later that this was part of a large and very elaborate promotional event for Sega in Italy, which almost nobody outside of that country had ever heard of. This is the story of the hog with the death ray eyes. Or as it was known in Italy, the Giochi Preziosi Sonic Badge Competition. And let's get the obvious out of the way. I'm likely to make a few errors trying to pronounce some of the Italian names during this video, but I'll do my best to try and get them right. Companies love and hate competitions. A competition is a guaranteed way to get fans and customers excited about an upcoming product, but they're also very expensive to run. Aside from all the promotion you've got to do, you're also, at the end, just giving your stuff away for free. Which is why most companies try to do competitions as cheaply as possible. Today, most competitions simply invite you to just like and retweet a picture in order to win a prize. But sometimes, to drum up the maximum hype and interest, companies create huge epic events. And this is the story of one such event held in Italy in 1992. In the early 1990s, Giochi Prezioshi were a toy company that also produced TV shows, which they used to directly advertise their products to children. They also happened to get the exclusive rights to sell every Sega console in Italy during this time, and in 1992, the company began a major promotional campaign for every single Sega system available at the time. They ran a competition to win Sega Mega Drives, Game Gears, Master Systems, and even karaoke machines, as well as large bundles of Sega games and a few other smaller items. But this competition wasn't just your typical write your answer to this question on a postcard or call this number now. This was a competition which was quite elaborate and incredibly complex in terms of how you participated in it. To actually enter the competition, you needed a physical item, a Sonic the Hedgehog pin badge. Otherwise, it was impossible to enter and take part in this event. So why did you need a badge? Well, we'll get onto that later. But for now, let's take a look at the pin badge itself. Now the badge itself is made of, um, it's very thick, chunky plastic. It's quite light though, you can feel there's some weight at the top where the speaker is. Anyway, if we flip it over, we can see that the pin badge, if I just get it to focus there, has three different modes. We've got TV off and on. Now off obviously turns it off, on turns it on. TV mode, I'm gonna explain a little bit more in this video, but uh, if we put it to on, I have put some batteries in. Yeah, so these are some fresh batteries in, and um, that's basically what it does. As for 
how it worked. I, I have tested this to see if it does work and would and would be a winning badge and unfortunately I cannot get it to work or respond to the competition requirements so I'm guessing this wasn't one that did work but to be fair I haven't seen a single pin badge that did work like the competition said. Hmm. Well anyway. So how did you actually get a badge? Well this is one of the more unusual parts of the story. Because as far as I can tell, there was only one way to get a badge. But when you hear what you had to do to get one, and realise what you could win, you'll spot an obvious problem. So let's just make sure we're all up to date. To enter the competition, you needed the Sonic the Hedgehog pin badge. It was impossible to enter the competition without one. And there seems to be only one confirmed method to acquiring the pin badge. And that was to buy a Sega Mega Drive in Italy during a small window of time in 1992. Anyone who bought the console during this time would find that along with a bundled game, there was also the pin badge and instructions for entering the competition inside the box. But I can't believe it was the only method to get one, because you'll quickly realise there's a huge problem. Because the star prize in this competition was a Sega Mega Drive. So to win a Mega Drive, you first had to buy a Mega Drive. Unless anyone has evidence to say otherwise, this seems like it was the only way to get a badge. So let's say you bought your Mega Drive to win a Mega Drive and you've got your Sonic pin badge. What do you have to do next? The competition was promoted on a number of TV adverts and segments on various children's magazine shows. At the time, Jerry Culler, who was an Italian celebrity known for his talents as a comedian and actor, was one of the driving forces used to help promote the consoles. He would appear in adverts to tell people who had the badge what to do. Remember that setting on the badge that said TV? Well, it turned out that the badge had a small receiver in it that would respond to some kind of radio signal. And during a special TV broadcast, what you had to do was to turn the switch on the back of the badge to TV. And if music played and the lights flashed during a specific segment of the broadcast, you were a winner. How did they do this? I mentioned at the start that the company behind the competition not only sold toys, but also ran a TV network, and they happened to have one of the most popular children's TV shows on called Bim Bum Bang, and the competition effectively launched on this show. During the show, the signal would be broadcast, and if anyone watching the show saw their badge flash, they had to call the station and claim their prize. And they also had a few competitions for those who didn't have badges, which would involve you writing into the station to win some other lesser value prizes. And there was also some commercials which also had the signal broadcast during them. And they ran during the following week. But the main draw was this one TV show. For a long time, the show which launched the competition was considered lost media. Whilst people who originally watched the show remembered the Sonic Badge competition, nobody had a copy of it. It wasn't until five years later, in 2013, that someone found a recording of the show and uploaded it to YouTube. And oh my, is it something else. Evviva Sonic! Ma adesso... The segment starts with the hosts practically gushing over how amazing the Game Gear is, because it's a handheld which can show and display colour. They also really like Sonic and say that he's on the Mega Drive, which also displays nice colours. Remember, this show was run by the same people who were trying to sell these systems, which is why it sounded a little bit like a sales pitch. One really odd part is when the show cuts to the female host and she tells the guy not to distract her because she's made it to the last level of Sonic 1. Despite the fact she's clearly playing the Marble Zone and the music that's being played is from the Green Hill Zone. <laughs> Hey. 
As the show continues, they tell you a little bit more about the competition, that the badge can activate during a special section of the show, and if your badge happens to be one of the lucky ones, you'd win a SEGA console with lots of games. But if you didn't have a badge, there was still a way to take part in the event. If you went to a store and bought three different SEGA games, you'd get a special coupon. If you then sent that coupon into the TV studio, you'd have the chance to win either a Mega CD or a random karaoke machine. This was a really expensive competition just to take part in. They also perform a demonstration of how the badge works, but they don't go into specifics, just that it reacts to a special signal, and then they run a test to show how the badge reacts when the signal's activated. So just think, this is one of the most elaborate competitions I've ever heard of, certainly for video games, especially when you compare it to competitions run today. The fact that a company was going to send a signal through the TV to trigger a device that you had in your home in 1992 is straight out of science fiction for the time. The only thing I can't quite understand is how the only way to enter the competition was to buy a console and the grand prize was the same console. But also from the standpoint of the people running the competition, the logistics behind this were huge. You first had to create a small device which could pick up and react to a signal sent through a TV. You then had to rely on people to actually buy the Mega Drive to get the badge. Then those same people had to be watching the TV at the right time, have the badges powered up and switched on at the right setting, and then hope someone who had a winning badge would actually call in and claim their prize. And that doesn't include the huge marketing campaign that went into supporting this. Speaking of the marketing campaign, since 2013, several other adverts and various other press material from the campaign have been uploaded, which just goes to show how huge this campaign and promotion was. Multiple adverts directly advertised the campaign, each came with their own unique animation of Sonic doing the flashy Death Ray Eyes thing. And that's it, that's the story of the Death Ray Eyes Sonic pin badge or the pin badge competition as it was known in Italy at the time. It's definitely one of the most elaborate competitions I've seen, not just for video games, but just for competitions in general. It's such a cool idea to give people an actual physical item which would react to a signal sent through a television set to tell them if they've won a prize or not. But as cool as it was, I'm not sure if I could have justified buying a console just to enter a competition in which I would potentially win the exact same console. There is one final interesting footnote to mention to this story. The company behind this competition also ran additional adverts for the sale of Sega Mega Drives and various other Sega consoles. And each of these adverts included their own unique Sonic animations, and one even gave Sonic a voice. Maybe we'll take a look at those in detail someday. See you next time! Evviva Sonic! Ma adesso, per chi ha la spilla, ta 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 ta! Hey guys, if you liked the video, please click that like and subscribe button. If you'd like to continue the adventures, make sure you follow me on Twitter and Instagram. If you'd like what I do and would like to support my channel further, please consider backing me on Patreon or buy me a coffee using the links in the description. Even the smallest donation is a huge help to keep this channel going. But most of all, just... Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch my content. Knowing that someone is out there watching this always puts a smile on my face. Thank you.